what in the world are you doing up there? And how did you get up there? Welcome back to the sawmill, friends. It's Tuesday, and before we get going, we've got a lot going on today. Let's check on the kiln. I think this lumber is about done. All right, friends, as you can see on the dry bulb right there, I hope that comes through the 150.8. That's the temperature inside of the kiln. I have eight quarter and nine quarter walnut and cherry in there. And I've been running for 150 degrees now for about 24 hours. And that's what you gotta do to sterilize your lumber and kill any buds that's in it. I think we're pretty good right there. We'll go ahead and shut this thing down and let this kiln cool off for about one more day naturally through the vents. And this load will be finished, ready to put some more in. Go ahead and power it off. It's as simple as that. Then over here, I got two auxiliary fans in the kiln and they're on their own switch. Cut those off. That's all you gotta do. Then come down here and open up these vents and let the lumber kind of start cooling off naturally. And any of that moisture that's still trapped inside the kiln that might have come out of the lumber during the sterilization should come out through the vents. Got one more on the other side of the kiln besides this one. There's two of them total. All right, guys, I usually don't come in the kiln when I turn it off like that, but I was really curious about the moisture content. As you can see, this is all eight quarter and some nine quarter walnut and some cherry at the very bottom. All of it's been air drying for about almost two years. So we got our Delmhurst hooked up. That's the best moisture meter you can buy right there, guys, the Delmhurst. I got the pins that drove all the way in right there. I got it set for walnut, which is 47. Let's check out the moisture here. Check that out, guys. 6.9, 6.8, that's about, probably round that up to 7%. That's pretty good right there for eight quarter walnut. Not too bad. now friends I run into a small obstacle here on my way back to the mill this maple tree is gonna be a problem with the new tractor the old tractor went right under it but this one here since it has the cab on it will definitely hit those branches up there and cause a lot of damage so it looks like we're gonna be getting out the chainsaw tomorrow and maybe even cutting this thing down so it's not a real valuable tree. You hate to cut it, it gets a little bit of shade back here, but I definitely don't want to damage that cab right there. So what we got here on the forts is a dedicated toolbox for the sawmill. I'm sick and tired of having tools scattered everywhere around the mill when I need them. I've always wanted to buy a little tool chest like this to put everything for the sawmill in it. And even better than that, it's in Woodmiser Orange. So it's gonna match everything real good. So it looks like we're going to be carrying this thing back here and putting it together. All right, guys, here we go. Anybody interested in this toolbox? It does come from Harbor Freight, like I was saying earlier. The only thing I got extra was this little holder right here for paper towels and also this work table that goes over here on the side. And if you got one of those 20% coupons that everybody's got, get this whole setup right here plus tax for less than two hundred dollars i think it was like one 
I think 187 out the door or something like that. Not a bad deal. The assembly was not too bad. This whole part right here was already put together. I just had to put the bottom together and the casters and lift that right there on top of it and it was done. But it's not a bad toolbox, guys. It's not too bad. But this is going to be real handy for the tools I use here at the mill. I don't have to go in the shop and grab them all the time. And I'm not even started organizing this, but I'll put my cameras on the right side there when I'm up here working. Of course, when I leave, the cameras go back in that hard shell Pelican case right there for transport. But I'll probably organize this as I start working into it. Got some nice drawers here on the bottom. And like anybody else, there's a set of wrenches and a holder, and a lot of wrenches are missing. That's a shocker, isn't it? Everybody's toolbox is probably like that. These are somewhere, guys. I'm, not, I'm just not sure where they're at. I need to find them. But it's pretty nice. It's going to be a really nice addition here. And I just realized I might need two of these. So we might go buy another one while they're on sale. All right, friends. Back to the sawmill here. If you're wondering why I'm wearing different clothes, it's the next day. I forgot I had to close the swimming pool down yesterday. So it kind of put me behind there on my plans. And... Uh, what in the world is that? All kinds of nasty stuff crawling out of this timber. And uh, real quick on the toolbox, I misspoke earlier about that. It's actually, uh, I think, a little bit less than $300, not $200. I think with tats, it was around $280 or something like that. I said earlier it was less than $200, and I was wrong about that. It's a little bit less than $300. So about $280 counting tats for the toolbox and both those accessories, the paper towel holder and the side table. Just want to clear that up real fast in case you guys go to Harbor Freight and wonder if the prices have went up or something. So on the mill, this is more of the oak that was brought down by the farmer a few weeks ago. And this is a 10 footer. Diameter is about 18 inches by eyeballing it, something like that. Gonna be doing one buys out of this for him for some barn siding. It's really a low grade oak. Got a lot of knots right here, a lot of defects. This was taken down by the power company due to a right away on his farm a few years ago and he brought it over a few months ago to saw. I think it's been on the ground about four years. So there's gonna be a lot of spalting here toward the sapwood and it's gonna be kind of punky on the edges as well. May have a little bit of rot right there. I'll try to trim that off and get the squares cant that I can. Form up the engine and get going guys and this should go pretty fast. Got a brand new blade on the mill that's 055 double hard seven degree wood miser blade. That's the thicker wood miser blade right there. I like those blades that cut a lot flatter when you're running the sawmill. The only downside is you can only resharp those blades about three times and you run down to the gullet till there's not enough material left to use it safely or the band will break. One of the two. But that's my favorite blade to run right there. And if I could do it all over again, I would buy nothing but 055 blades. As soon as my old 45 blades kind of recycle themselves and start running out, I'll replace every one of them with the 55s. They run so much better. And uh, that's all I got to say about that. Old 55s, love those things. So let's get going, guys. Running out of daylight here. Going to knock this one out of the park. And after this one's over with, I'm not sure what I'm going to be getting into next. Depends on how much time we have left here today. It's already 3 o'clock. I spent all morning cleaning the saw head. It needs a lot of maintenance. They did some alignment stuff and stuff like that because I got an order for butternut tomorrow. So I need to get that butternut on the mill by this evening to start on that as well. That may be the next video though. We'll see how this goes. So hang in there with me guys. Saw up some of this oak.
get a little AC going, a little warm in here. So, I thought I'd take a little break here, run down to the burn pond, get rid of these slabs that uh, Yanmar just got through regenerating, where it cleans itself and it really stinks after it's done doing that. So I got some fans going, let the sawmill kind of air out for a few minutes. Still getting used to this tractor, guys. It's a whole lot different from the other one. A whole lot different tractor. This one doesn't have a clutch like the other one has. It has a uh, has the hydrostatic transmission, which is uh, very similar to like a riding lawnmower, just forward and back. Got three different gears. Pretty easy to operate. Just trying to get used to it. Getting used to this cab is the easy part, guys. This thing is nice right here. Really nice. So I've got a lot of questions here about this tractor, whether or not it will operate the implements that we already have here at the mill. And it sure will. They're universal. Uh, the tiller will run on the back. The grapple will hook to the front. I just have to get a third function valve to run the grapple and we'll be good to go. Hopefully that'll get here in about a week or two and we'll hook that up. 